did you know that if you have three out of the four skills of a commander already at five it costs an additional 310 legendary commander sculptures to unlock the expertise for that commander that's right bringing the last skill to five costs almost as much as the other three skills combined in other words almost half the legendary commander sculptures that you're spending to expertising a legendary commander go into just that last skill but the good news is that there are a bunch of commanders in rise of kingdom that you can get 80 or 90 or even 95 percent of their value by just getting three of the four skills all the way to max and that means you're gonna save a ton of legendary commander sculptures by going for these commanders as opposed to ones that really should be expertise so today we're gonna talk about some of those commanders now this video was requested by a lot of you guys because the other day I made a video talking about the best five five one one commanders but if you want something that's a little bit more powerful and a little bit more complete then this video is for you now just like in the five five one one commander video we have to start with some honorable mentions these are commanders that are good but not somewhere that you should be investing your universal legendary commander sculptures which is what this guide is all about and we have to first talk about gold key commanders now this is something that there was a little bit of a misconception with my previous video people thought that I was uh, omitting or ignoring Mehmed Mehmed is one of the best if not the best legendary commander that comes out of the gold keys in the late game rivaled only potentially by Charles Martel and Mulan depending on the scenario so yes I want to be clear Mehmed is exceptionally good at 5511 and even better if you can get him at 5515 because this last skill is going to give you 10 percent extra troops in your army which is very good for dealing skill damage plus you get his relic however you should not be putting universal legendary commander sculptures into Mehmed or any other gold key commander for that matter and the only other honorable mention I want to discuss here besides the gold key commanders is Minamoto if you can get a 5515 configuration on your Minamoto then there's no real reason to buy any more of his VIP bundles because you've pretty much got all the value that you need yes his expertise is good but again for how much money you're spending on Minamoto is it really worth it to get just bonus damage to barbarians on your way to that expertise I'm not really sure okay first let's start with infantry and we got to talk about Richard okay now my general advice for Richard is to bring him to five one 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 or if you really want some extra tankiness you could do five five one one that's that's a solid place for you to stop however uh if you want to invest more sculptures in in him in the early game perhaps you are a low to mid spender in the early game and you've just got some extra sculptures to burn for your first kvk then a five 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 one Richard is definitely the way to go the third skill goes from 10 percent of stats to 30 percent of stats when you go from one to five so you gain 15 percent infantry attack 15 percent infantry defense which is nice when you bring this skill to five the fourth skill here is just healing effect enhancement and the watchtowers by the way don't do anything they, they really just don't do anything this 30 percent damage taken from watchtowers is so negligible that it literally does not even matter so yeah you could do a 5551 Richard uh, is this the best infantry commander to bring to 5551 absolutely not in fact he's probably the worst commander on this list for infantry at 5551 but it's definitely a configuration that you can use moving on to one of the best infantry commanders that we can talk about here is Guan Yu now the thing with Guan Yu is that the skill that you do not want is his second skill which means getting a 5155 configuration on Guan Yu is quite difficult and you'll probably have to use quite a bit of the skill reset items in order to achieve this configuration unless you're super lucky now for those of you who don't know what skill resets are you can see in the bottom right corner you click skill top right corner you click reset here are, you can see I have eight skill reset items these items are relatively rare to get usually they come around in the recharge rewards so typically you're only gonna have access to these as a low spender or above but there may be other ways to obtain these items I don't typically keep track of when they come around because these items aren't that useful to me however I did use some on my Guan Yu I did use some on my Nebu here which we'll talk about later and I did use some on another infantry commander that we'll discuss in just a moment so with all that being said if you can get a 5155 Guan Yu you have 90 to 95 percent of the value from Guan Yu the only thing you're missing is the expertise the reason for that is his second skill is only for rallying and if you're an open field free-to-play player you're not going to be doing any rallies with Guan Yu and typically you're not going to be doing any rallies with, with Guan Yu at, at all regardless right so the first skill is his massive AoE 
third skill gives you a nice infantry attack and march speed bonus and the fourth skill is going to give you some really solid bonus damage factor to the active skill and that's everything that you want now the expertise is nice he gains 15 percent extra skill damage when he gains a shield and a nice march speed bonus when leaving a structure so i'm not saying the expertise here is useless but for th think about it like this 310 legendary uh commander sculptures to gain a chance for bonus skill damage and march speed only when leaving a structure it's very situational it's uh you can't really guarantee that you're gonna get a ton of value out of either of those things depending on the scenario you find yourself fighting in so uh yeah if you can avoid the second skill i definitely recommend it guan yu is perfectly fine at five one five five even for a while i ran a five two five five guan yu and for me that i mean you still save a ton of sculptures there moving on let's talk about sargon one of the newest legendary infantry commanders in the game and he's very interesting because if you're not going to expertise sargon it's actually worth not even unlocking this fourth skill now that does mean that you can't use him as primary because you're not going to have him at max level so he's pretty much doomed to be a secondary in that instance however what's really great about sargon at 5550 is that he's going to deal 2500 signal target damage factor that's over the course of five seconds so unfortunately you will have to stick to that target which is sometimes a little bit tricky for infantry second skill gives you 10 percent bonus attack 20 percent bonus health and a 100 chance of inflicting the odd debuff which is primarily what you're going to be doing with sargon anyway in the open field pair him with an aoe commander and you're going to be spreading this debuff aoe to a ton of different people and then this third skill here gives you 15 percent march speed 10 percent infantry bonus damage and a 10 percent chance to proc 30 percent bonus damage with an eight second cooldown so this third skill lots of interesting stuff here a lot of just raw damage numbers and the march speed is very useful so we love to see that the reason you don't unlock this last skill with sargon if you're not going to expertise him is that because this skill will actually remove the stacks of debuff that you applied with the second skill in favor of some damage factor and this damage factor is for most people not worth it compared to the extra skill damage they're going to be taking by having those odd debuff stacks so really you either want to do a five 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 zero or you want to expertise him that's really the two configurations for sargon and if you're going for a budget build then just don't unlock the last skill and you'll be really good to go you'll get probably 80 or 90 percent of the value out of sargon just by doing that you're only missing out on a shield a little bit of damage factor defense it's it's a small amount of stats on this last one i'd say probably you get probably 80 percent of the value at 5550 next let's talk about Tarek. okay this is another commander that i used uh i think about 12 skill resets on so i did use quite a bit on him unfortunately I got very unlucky but Tarek at 5515 is exceptionally good okay what you're missing on this third skill is just for rallies and his expertise here only bumps up his active skills damage factor by 300 unless they're surrounded in which case you could get an extra 600 damage factor out of it so total it's 900 damage factor for 310 legendary commander sculptures if the target that you're hitting is being surrounded by the maximum amount a lot of times they will not be so 900 is the highest 300 is the lowest so let's call it on average 600 extra damage factor for 310 legendary commander sculptures to me is that worth it I really do not think so as you can see here by the fact that I have not unlocked it if I find Tarek is really good later down the line I can always come back and finish him off but at 5515 you gain a massive single target nuke that goes up to 2500 if the target is being surrounded which you I mean you will have multiple armies so you will be able to guarantee that they get surrounded which is very good second skill gives you a ton of bonus infantry attack 10% bonus uh damage to cavalry and 10% march speed outside of your territory and then the last skill here gives you just a flat 15% bonus all damage that's crazy and a 10% chance to reduce the target's rage by 80 for three seconds that's a lot of rage reduction on that last skill there eight second cooldown but you're doing a ton of single target nuking with Tark. there's really no reason for open field players to expertise this commander and the final commander we have to talk about just like in the 5511 video is Heraclius now this is not a uh an infantry commander it is leadership however at 5551 you're getting uh probably 90 percent of the value out of this commander the first skill circular aoe five targets that's very massive and a 1200 damage factor mighty shield which is even better than a regular shield because they stack second skill at five gives you 30 percent health to any troop pipe you pair him with which is very very good 
third skill at five gives you 20 percent bonus skill damage straight up that is it's good for most commanders in the game including himself and he gives himself another mighty shield when he pops an active skill which is very good eight second cooldown this last skill being at one gives you a instant proc 500 damage factor to people that are hitting you in the open field but you're not really missing out on much for the rest of the skill in the open field now his expertise here is nice 10 percent less down to normal attacks and if it is a mixed army it's even higher however most of the time i think players are not going to use this in a mixed army in the open field now if you're going to use him for your city garrison for whatever reason you would expertise him i guess but for open field fighting you really don't need yeah 10 percent less damage to normal attacks is nice but again you get probably 85 to 90 percent of the value of heraclius at 5551 and i think that that is exceptionally good value you for an aoe commander that also gives you some solid shielding next we're going to move on to cavalry and we have to talk about saladin because he's the one that you get access to the earliest in the game he comes around in kvk season two as you can see on the top here and he is infamous for being pretty much the first five 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 one legendary commander where you have almost zero reason to expertise this commander this last skill is only for rallies and the expertise only increases his active skill damage by 300 you do get a bit of a stronger march speed reduction at 50 percent but realistically i mean if if you're really just using saladin for single target damage and being a little bit tanky in the open field you do not need this last skill or the expertise at all you get probably 95 percent of the value from saladin by just skipping the last skill and the good news is unlike sargon you can get him to level 60 and use him as a primary commander now we already talked about the first skill single target damage with march speed reduction and healing effect reduction the second skill gives you 20 percent defense 20 percent attack and five percent march speed for cavalry very very nice uh, distribution of stats here and the third skill is really good because if you do 30 percent uh skill damage taken reduction and 20 percent reduced counterattack damage that you take we really like to see that so much value on these first three skills here almost nobody should be expertising saladin for sure and infamous for being a good pair for saladin is william of course five 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 one william is exceptional now there is more of a recent expertise william than saladin as you can see here i did go ahead and expertise him but let's take a look here okay you get 1500 damage factor aoe three target and a march speed reduction second skill gives you 20 percent attack 15 percent march speed and 10 percent bonus damage outside of territory third skill gives you 20 percent extra attack and a 10 percent chance to deal damage to the target with a damage factor of 800 and if they're surrounded it's going to be a little bit more the third skill being at one still gives you 10 percent bonus defense and your allies will gain 50 rage per second for three seconds if your active skill hits two or more targets now the best part about this last skill isn't the defense it's actually the rage regeneration uh the rage regen for yourself and your allies is huge and no matter how many points you put into this last skill it's still 50 rage per second for three seconds right so whether this is at one or five the rage regen is the same and that is the main reason that you're getting this skill now yes the defense is nice but the fact that you get all the benefit of the first three skills and really all you're missing out here by not expertising him is 10 percent defense and a little bit of extra damage 200 extra damage factor on that 10 percent chance to proc skill i mean man it, you get so much value probably 90 or 85 percent of the value from william comes at 5551 and i would say most players do not need to expertise william it does not make sense for most people the last commander we're going to talk about for cavalry is zhang yu okay zhang yu we talked about him a little bit in the 5511 video and i said that you know this commander is such a glass cannon that uh yes they deal so much damage in the open field very good aoe but it's also really risky to use this commander and if you are going to get him you probably should expertise him but it, you you definitely are better off doing a 5515 zhang yu then a 5511 Zhang Yu. The reason for that is you get all the value of his active skill, defense reduction, low rage requirement, nice AoE damage factor. You also gain 40% cap attack, 15% march speed, and a 20% chance to gain even more march speed, which is nice. Third skill is for rallies. You don't need this for most players, especially free to play. And the last skill, when this is at five, it further reduces the rage requirement down to 850, which is really nice. And when you use that active skill, you gain bonus cap damage. So here is where you're getting even more glass cannon damage than you would at 5511 if you can really stick to that target and stack it up to six times you are going to stack this relatively quickly because his rage engine is so fast and all you're missing out on is 10 percent skill damage and the additional 10 percent skill damage buff when you have a rage buff so yes if you pair zhang yu to let's say uh, william then you would be missing out on quite a bit of stuff here on the expertise 20 percent bonus skill damage i mean you know it's like 
Sun Tzu's fourth skill on an expertise is Sun Tzu's fourth skill I mean and Sun Tzu's fourth skill is actually better than this to be honest with you because his does not have any requirements but let's say best case scenario you always get both perks of this is Sun Tzu's fourth skill worth 310 legendary commander sculptures I mean I don't know it's something to consider now again be very careful investing in Zhang Yu he's he really is a glass cannon and he can fill your hospital pretty quick all right let's move on to archers and we gotta start off with Bay. okay this is Bay right here we love Artemisia here on the channel she's gorgeous all right if you can get an Artemisia to 5515 particularly behind an expertise Boudica Prime or an expertise Amanatore you have a really solid open field commander with Artemisia the reason for that is because her first skill 1800 three target AOE really solid stuff there second skill tons of tankiness for the open field 40 percent of tanky stats 20 percent of health and defense really nice for archers third skill just for garrisons you do not need this in the open field at all and the fourth skill will give you 50 percent increased damage for five seconds however it does silence her for three seconds but again if you pair her with an expertise Manatore, which makes her immune to silence or if you have an expertise Boudica who has an 80 percent chance of dispelling silence then you just get all upside from this last skill and that's 50 percent bonus damage guys that's huge for a five second that's it's very powerful now you're missing out on her expertise which honestly it's not that great you have a 10 percent chance of dealing 400 damage factor over time for three seconds which is good but the target deals 15 percent more skill damage so it's actually plus and a minus all in one I'd rather just skip that if I were you so really you have a ton of upside with a 5515 Artemisia I absolutely love her as a value budget build and you can save 310 legendary commander sculptures similarly let's talk about Nebu who also at 5515 is exceptionally good because he is a rally commander and you don't need this third skill unless you're rallying okay first skill five target AOE which is more targets than Artemisia even though the damage factor is lower in general you'll be dealing more AOE skill damage with Nebu which is good second skill 30 percent bonus defense and 15 percent March speed that's one of the things that is kind of a downside with Artemisia is that she's very slow there's no March speed on her so she can get caught even though she is tanky Nebu uh, is a little bit faster so we love to see that and it's a trade-off for missing some health here again third skill don't need it fourth skill gives you 15 percent all damage which we love to see and your normal attacks have a 10 percent chance of reducing the target's rage by 100. again just like Tarek this is really solid reducing the target rage and his expertise here gives you 500 more damage factor to the target that you're hitting but not as AoE it's just to a single target so just like Tarek who on average gives you 600 he gives you only 500 it's not worth 310 sculptures to me it's just not so if you can use skill resets to get 5515 that's a great use for Nebu next we'll talk about Tomi who we actually talked about in the 55 one one video as well not because she's good at five five one one but because she's good at five one one five which is exceptionally hard to get that is the hardest configuration to get on any uh skill distribution for any commander the good news is that if you're willing to invest 380 sculptures in her then you can do a five one five five uh and hopefully you know you get lucky and skip that second skill because it's only for when attacking cities not even for attacking garrisons or strongholds just cities which is horrendous first skill single target damage factor plus you get the poison damage and third skill 30 percent archer attack and a 10 percent chance to reduce defense by 30 percent for three seconds deceptively good honestly because that's normal attacks fourth skill we already talked about in previous videos but this is a 100 chance of inflicting the poison debuff stacks to the target which is the reason that people use tamiris to begin with and her expertise you're not missing much here it says 10 percent increased attack and 10 percent increased counter attack damage when you're attacked reduces the attack of cav units attacking troops by 10 percent so only cavalry get a 10 percent attack reduction when hitting tamiris and you know yeah 10 percent counter attack damage is nice 10 percent increase attack is not great i mean for 310 sculptures this is definitely not worth it in my opinion so 5155 tomi is a really good investment for an open field archer commander that you can get in season two just kind of hard to skip that second skill just like on guan yu and finally we got to talk about henry okay five five one five henry is super good in the open field okay first skill 2300 damage factor to a single target is huge and you take 30 percent less skill damage for five seconds that's a really powerful buff right there we love to see it the second skill 20 percent archer attack and defense and 
20% extra March speed outside your territory. That's some good March speed for archers. We love that as well. Third skill just for rallying, which again, open field don't need that fourth skill gives you 10% archer damage. And when attacked, there's a 10% chance to deal direct damage to the target of 800. So this skill at five does give you 8% more archer damage than you would at just one. And it doubles the direct damage factor from 400 to 800. So really nice stuff. Expertise here is pretty good. I would say you get probably 80 to 85 percent of the value out of Henry at 5515 if you're not using him as a, as a rally commander it's just open field so really good stuff here with Henry as well and again 310 sculptures saved all right all right now let's talk about those commanders that uh you can use at 5551 but you definitely should expertise them instead of course we're going to start with Song Ye because he comes around in season one if you can get him to 5515 you have a really good Song Ye you probably have like 75 percent of his value there which I love to see but again the the expertise is so good that I actually do think it's worth 310 legendary commander sculptures that's right turning his AOE from 1400 to 1700 and making it from a cone shape to a circle I think is definitely worth 310 legendary commander sculptures even though this third skill is literally useless 10 percent increased attack to your city doesn't apply in strongholds I mean this skill really sucks but it's definitely worth expertising Esong for all the added value that the circular AOE brings you next we'll talk about Alexander the Great season two commander 5551 is a pretty good place to stop with Alexander except you probably should expertise him if you have met 5551 you have the maximum amount of shielding factor and damage factor and you get the full 30 percent march speed 30 percent attack which is really good the only thing you're missing out on here is the alternating attack to defense change when you do have a shield up uh when it's only at one you have 20 percent attack 10 percent defense uh and the attack will double as you increase the points here and the defense will triple from 10 to 30. I think it's worth getting this skill all the way up to five and the expertise is pretty good as well it gives you a 30 percent increased damage debuff to three targets in a circular area around Alexander the Great which is really good that's a powerful debuff on top of all the stats you gain from the fourth skill you probably should expertise Alexander if you're considering stopping him at 5551 I feel like you're doing it wrong but uh he can be used at 5551 next let's talk about CPO Prime okay because you probably are freaking out that I've been talking about him so far in this video but yes 5515 is a great CPO or 5551 whatever you want to do these first two skills are exceptional giving you a massive AoE with health debuff and 40 percent attack some March speed and bonus March speed when you're outside your territory the third skill here if this is only a one you still get 10 percent bonus health and a 10 percent chance of dealing 250 damage factor over three seconds so you're getting half the value of this skill by just unlocking it and then the last skill here if you bring this to five there's a 50 percent chance of reducing skill damage you take by 30 percent and a doubling the damage factor shield from 250 to 500. so per point you actually get more value in the last one than you do on the third one but if you care more about the base health points and damage factor over time then you could do 5551 and just you know this last skill will be good to have unlocked but really man you want to expertise him you really do both these last skills are good okay realistically and the expertise is great as well if the target is silence which will be often the case with CPO because you'll probably be using with Guan you get 30 percent uh, rage speed I mean that's really good and just bonus 10 percent skill damage I mean you should definitely expertise CPO next let's talk about Boudica which you know I'm kind of torn here okay I expertise her and I think she's worth expertising if you're gonna get her you probably should expertise her but the last skill's not that good really what makes her good is her expertise okay the first skill single target nuke and really powerful debuff to the target 35 percent increased skill damage taken really good stuff there archer attack and archer defense plus some march speed love to see the stats on that the third skill 25 percent skill damage taken reduction she really needs this because otherwise she's I mean she's kind of a glass cannon but without this she's even more so the rest of the skills not that great but it's just bonus damage for a single turn I guess the fourth skill is where you know you don't really need this skill increased damage to infantry this is a linear scaling and it's only up to five percent which I mean don't get me wrong five percent bonus damage to infantry is good there's a lot of infantry out in the open field and the healing factor does double but healing factor is not the most important thing in the open field honestly and there's so many commanders that nerf healing factor or prevent you from healing or whatever the case might be this fourth skill at one is totally fine it's the expertise that I think is really good with Boudica okay she's dispelling the control effects which includes silence I think that's so powerful it's so good plus 10 percent archer damage man that 
that's really that's a good expertise is it worth 310 sculptures i think if you're gonna pair her with somebody like artemisia at 5515 you need this you, you just need this absolutely um if you're gonna pair with isong a ah man i like it's good to have it really is you don't want your isong to be silenced but at the end of the day if you're not focused on archers then maybe you can leave her at 5551 and save 310 sculptures I personally am in the camp of just expertising her, but I'll leave that up to you because this is a 5551 video. Next, we can talk about Nevsky, our boy. He is, oh my God, Nevsky. 2300 damage factor on the first skill and a stacking defense debuff, which is really solid. Second skill gives you 20% bonus attack for calves, 20% march speed, and 20% health outside your territory. I mean, that is very very helpful then you have a choice here with nevsky just like you do with cpo of which of these two skills do you want to skip if you want to skip one which let me just go on the record and say you should expertise nevsky you really should you should not stop him at five 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 one you're gonna get so much value out of the last skills i personally think the fourth skill is better than the third skill in my opinion because if you unlock this third skill okay you still get 10 percent bonus cav defense you're still gonna deal two percent bonus damage to surrounded targets and take percent and take one percent less damage from surrounded targets and the fourth skill being at five is going to give you 25 percent bonus skill damage with an extra 35 percent on top of it when you cast an active skill that extra skill damage i think is just better than what you get on the third skill but it's also hard to skip the third skill so i would say when you're leveling up nevsky just you know get the first two skills to five and then wherever the last two skills land i think you'll be happy with it but really you want to expertise them because both these skills are good and realistically when you unlock the expertise you get five percent more normal attack damage and a 10 percent chance for 30 percent health when attacked that's really good you want that extra health you really do for cavalry because they are relatively squishy god that he's such a good commander you definitely want to expertise him and finally this is no surprise to most of you Joan of Arc Prime okay Joan of Arc Prime at 5515 is probably like 80 or 90 percent of her value I mean she's really good at 5515 let's take a look here 2000 damage factor AoE 5% bonus damage and 20 rage per second for three seconds for her and her two surrounded friendly troops. That's a really good rage buff. Second skill, 20% bonus attack, 10% March speed with another 10% outside of territory and 5% more normal attack damage. Skipping the third skill, all you're missing out on is you're missing 4% cab damage and 20% normal attack damage for one second. I mean, that's a one second buff. So really what you're missing out on is 4% cab damage, which yeah, that's good. But for 310 sculptures, you could skip it. And getting this last skill to five is very important for Joan of Arc, okay? That makes her have a 100% chance of casting her active skill for a second time for free. And that's where so much of her damage comes from. It's so good. Plus you're getting 10% cavalry health really good stuff here five five one five Joan is exceptional now her act her expertise does give her five percent more counterattack damage and when the target troop has more than 30 percent units remaining which they almost always will she's gonna deal five percent more damage just that's almost all the time five percent more damage plus all the stuff you got on the third skill you probably should expertise Joan of Arc Prime I think you should probably expertise her but if you want to skip this third skill and if you can skip it and you're low on sculptures maybe you could use her at 5515 and get a ton of value there anyway guys with that being said if you enjoyed this video or you learned something or found it useful drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton subscribe to the channel if you're new here and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your favorite 5551 commanders or equivalent 551 five or however the configuration is which one have you gotten the most value out of and which one do you think is the best i would love love to hear from you guys down there and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni i will talk to you guys again soon peace